Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Well, it's that time of year again. The winter is approaching. Pretty soon there'll be snow and ice to deal with. Well, there's a lot of products out on the market, both for snow melt and ice melt, as well as just old, regular old rock salt. What's the difference? What do you need? What'll do the best for you? Hey, stick with me and we'll check it out together. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Uh, you know, as the weather changes and that first snow is going to hit us, it's always great to be prepared. And there's different products that you can use to help control snow and ice. Now, one of the most common is just plain old water softener salt or rock salt. This is a medium granule. It's just pure sodium chloride and that can be applied to moderate snow and ice. And this is kind of an old standby, but it does have its limitations. And we'll come back to that in a moment. Then there are these kind of products, which I wanna thank my friends at Brody Chemical that manufactured this, but provided this to me here for us to demonstrate them and show them to you. These three different products, this is a step up from regular um, sodium chloride crystals in that this has an additional item in it. Uh, this is called Eco Melt. There's no colorant. It is a natural color. The granule size is a little bit smaller than this over here, which allows it to go into a brine. This, as it says on the package, will work in sub-zero temperatures. If you look here, you'll see why. Not only does it have sodium chloride, but it also has magnesium chloride. And that is a melting agent that actually helps create a brine very quickly. We'll get to that in a moment too, and why that is important. But that's got that magnesium chloride. Now let's go over here to this also. This is polar ice melt. Um, this is very similar to this in that it's got the same granule size. Uh, it also has in it magnesium chloride. So what's the difference? Well, this has colorant in it. Uh, and you can kind of see it through the bag slightly. It's slightly blue. Uh, we like to call it the Brody Blue because this is manufactured by Brody Chemical. So why is the color important? Well, it allows you to know where you've applied the product already so you don't double apply, over apply, or under apply. Uh, it's pretty hard to see white product on white ice or white snow. The last one is for real extreme situations. And it includes sodium chloride. Now, sodium chloride is a really interesting chemical. You blew it! I literally had one of the vice presidents of Brody Chemical um, put a bag of calcium chloride inside a, a thick plastic bag, pour water into it, and had me hold on to it. It got hot really fast. Now, not boiling hot, but hot enough you wanted to put the bag down. It's real. It's not imagine or placebo effect. It really does heat up. Well, if you've got frozen areas that you need to cut through and get melted and liquefy, this can be used for that. But this is only for extreme uh, situations, and, uh, but it's good to have some of this on hand. Now, let's go back over this just a little bit and explain what you're trying to accomplish with this. It's all in the brine, baby. What's brine? Salty water. If you create salty water, it freezes at a much lower temperature than standard water does. So if you can create a brine and do it, let's say the optimum time is before snowfall really starts to hit, then as snow starts to land on the brine surface or where some of this is applied, it'll immediately keep bl uh, melting off um, because of that salty water film and make sure that there's no bond between the snow, the ice, or the concrete, or the asphalt, or whatever you're trying to protect. So, and then as it snow falls even heavier and heavier, you have to apply more, but getting ahead of it is always key. Now, salt kernels like this, it'll work, but you tend to have to put more product on. It's cheaper per pound. These all cost about one and a half times per pound uh, more than this. This is even more than that. 
but you only need to use lesser amounts. So therefore the economics kind of uh, balance out and you get better results with products that have enhancements in them. Another thing can happen that is uh, a negative on this regular uh, type of water softener or rock salt is the granule size may not be optimum for melting down uh, and so therefore brine formation does not occur quick enough. Uh, and so you end up with larger chunks. You can understand it would take longer to melt something this big than it would this big. And that scalability works throughout this. So this may not be the optimum size where these products uh, are made with the right size granule so they don't melt off immediately, but they slow release and create a longer burn, if you will, of uh, the brine solution. EcoMelt has no coloring, but it does have that magnesium chloride. Now, let's talk about magnesium chloride. It is a salt, and where you'll see it used a lot is in municipalities. Uh, here we're in the Mountain West, and you'll see as snow is predicted and the snow uh, front is coming into the area, the trucks will be out applying, the snow plows will be applying a magnesium chloride spray or brine to the surface of the highways in advance of the snow. Then when the snow hits, even if it's a heavy snow, it doesn't allow a bond to readily form between that snow ice and a concrete surface of the highway. And so when the snow plow trucks come back through, it shears off and not leave, uh, it, without leaving areas of black ice and so forth. So there is a tangible benefit to putting magnesium chloride in a product and boosting its performance. And that's what both of these do, this one with the colorant to help you with the right application rates. The other thing that is important about these products is that um, they don't tend to toxify the soil adjacent to the driveway to the sidewalk as fast as standard salt does. You've probably seen this before where you've had to heavily salt or you over salted an area on your, let's say your apron outside of your garage or on your sidewalk. And then you found that the grass that was adjacent had trouble growing the following season or plants struggled or certain ones died off. That's likely due to the soil becoming very salty and creating conditions that the plants cannot thrive in. There's less risk of that happening with these products because you apply more, uh, more judiciously, not apply more, you apply the correct amount, uh, which uh, does the job without putting a lot of material into the soil. I wanna give you a caveat with all of these kinds of products, whether it's rather uh, just regular salt or it's these other products, that you not use them on concrete that is less than a year old. Concrete that is younger than a year has not fully cured and it is prone to surface damage called spalling. When micro fissures are still there, uh, the brine gets down in it, you have a freeze thaw cycle, next thing you know, you're having flaking off of the surface. It's very ugly instead of that beautiful broomed or smooth or textured. Uh, service a uh, surface that you paid for so you don't want to use this in the first year You're gonna have to just do some manual cleaning off Now what happens if you got these products too late the snows already hit and you've got deep snow Let's say a foot of things on your your sidewalk uh, Do you just start? Sprinkling this in and letting it melt no the snow will dilute it and it'll it'll um, end up having not enough concentration of product to continue to work. You're gonna to need to do some manual labor, get the snow shovel or the snow blower out and get it down to the surface, then treat it at that point with product and keep ahead of the snowfall as much as you can. You'll really like the results. I am a big fan of these kinds of products and plan to use them ongoing. I think that you'll enjoy them as well. Again, I'd like to thank my friends over at Brody Chemical especially my friend Zach, who is Vice President of Operations there. I thank him for his generosity in providing these to us so that we could share how this really works and help you make the right decision.
We just mentioned also that you may end up with damage along the side of surfaces that you've protected, but what if your lawn is in bad shape as you go into the winter? Well, we've got a great technique that allows you to reseed that over winter. Check out this video that we produced that shows you how to seed your lawn and let it settle in over winter and come roaring back in the spring. It's a great technique and you'll love the results. And while you're at it, check out this other video that YouTube thinks is perfect for your interests and we'd enjoy it if you'd watch it too. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay getting ready to get those sidewalks and the apron clear. We'll see you around.